The problem with covering PC parts individually is that they all end up working together and I want this video to be of value to the people actually watching it so the timestamps for each and every component inside of this computer will be on screen because I'm going to go over all of the parts inside of this and then I'm going to explain why I ended up choosing the specific parts and pairing them. So the first thing that I'm going to cover is the case that I built everything in and that is the Antec NX410. This is a well-rounded case that does have the tempered glass side panels for those of you that like to look inside of your computer and it has two pre-installed 140 millimeter fans in the front and then one 120 millimeter fan in the rear. This is a good choice for those of you that are looking for a case that has decent airflow and a stylish design. So as far as the CPU, I ended up getting the Intel i3-13100F because this computer is for my niece's birthday and she doesn't need anything special. This is a quad core processor that was released in September 2023 and it's a good entry level processor for gaming and general use. Forgot to say to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. I hate saying it as much as you probably hate me saying it, but if I do not say it, like 1% of you will actually do it. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, all that good stuff. It has a base clock speed of 3.4 gigahertz and a boost clock speed of 4.5 gigahertz. The 13th generation CPUs from Intel is the first time that the i3 is actually something that I would recommend. 10th gen, 11th gen, 12th gen, 9th gen, 8th gen, 7th gen. I have never, ever, ever recommended an i3. This is the first time that I would ever recommend it for gaming specifically. Now, as far as the graphics card, I ended up getting the GeForce GTX 1660 Super, which is still one of the most popular graphic ca cards on the market. And specifically, the one that I ended up getting is the MSI Gaming GeForce GTX 1660 Super, because I don't know, it is, I just got it because it, it, it was the one that first popped up on Amazon. They're all pretty similar. And this is a good mid-range graphics card for gaming that can run most games at 1080p with high settings. And you can absolutely jump into the 1440p territory with other games like smaller ones like Minecraft, The Sims, Fortnite, etc. Games of that nature. But if you're going to be playing games like Cyberpunk 2077 or Starfield, you know, you're not going to be hopping into the 1440p p territory with that now as far as the ram i ended up getting the team group t force delta rgb ddr4 i only ended up getting 16 gigabytes again this is a computer build for my niece and she doesn't need anything more than 16 gigabytes of ram and i've gotten this many many times ddr4 plus ddr5 the color accuracy is really good with this in the RGB software that you end up using. Like if you choose white, it's going to be like, it's a little bit of a warmer white, but if you go into the like blue section of your RGB software, depending on the motherboard that you get, if you got an ASUS motherboard, you're going to install Armory Crate. If it's MSI, you're going to install Mystic Light. Gigabyte has their own, ASRock has their own, etc. But overall, this is good RAM. The speed, depending on which one you actually end up choosing, that all comes down to what you actually choose because Team Group T4 does have multiple options as far as RAM goes. And um, yeah, so recommend that. So the Asus Prime H770 plus DDR4 version is the motherboard that I ended up getting here. Um, Asus has always made some of the like lower end boards for computer builds of this nature that you're seeing in in this video and the Asus Prime H770 plus DDR4 is a is a decent motherboard for the i3-13100F and a GTX 1660 Super. You don't need to like do any like serious overclocking or anything like that. It has all the features that you're going to need including PCIe uh, 5.0 it has three m.2 slots and then it also has a usb 3.2 gen 2 type c the only con about this motherboard is that it does not have wi-fi and it does not have bluetooth so you are going to need a bluetooth dongle which i will have footage of the bluetooth dongle that i ended up getting for this thing on screen I forget the name of it, but it's it's one that I've used multiple times with the lower end Asus Prime boards and it works really, really well. So as far as the Fang Sang, I don't know how to pronounce this, we're going over the NVMe here. It's the S501 512GB NVMe. 
Um, it's, it has a read and write speed of up to 2,150 and then also 1,600 and it's compatible with laptops and PC and PS5 and the Xbox and all of the consoles that use an NVMe as well. So that's, you know, that's pretty cool. As far as the um, storage in this, it is only 512 gigabytes, but my niece really only plays games like Minecraft and uh, The Sims and Fortnite and just like smaller games. So she doesn't need anything like massive as of right now. And then, you know, because of the motherboard that we ended up getting, we do have other slots if we ever decide to upgrade in the future. Now, as far as the power supply, I, I always say this when, when I bring up Apivia power supplies. The one that I ended up getting is an Apivia ATX ES 600 watt Essence semi-modular gaming power supply. And what I really like to compare this to is, is years and cars. So back in 1995, the only reliable cars were Toyota and Honda. But now in 2023, basically any company out there making a vehicle is reliable. You can get a GMC, it's gonna be pretty reliable. You can get a Ford, it's gonna be pretty reliable. You can get a Lamborghini, reliable. Ferrari, reliable. Honda, Acura, Chevy, etc. Are there a few exceptions? Absolutely. But for the most part, you can't really go wrong. And technology is the same way. We're not living in, in a period where technology is in development. It's come a very long ways. And I've been building computers now for a couple of years and I've used multiple of PVA power supplies and I have not had one customer reach back out to me with any like red light blinking or anything like that. But with that said, I have not run into any issues. I want to say that I've used probably 50 Apivia power supplies at this point, and I've not once run into a problem with them. So, you know, um, yeah. I mean, I have a 1200 watt Apivia power supply in my computer, and I, I have a 4090 in my computer. I have a 13900K and an RTX 4090 in my computer. So I'm, I'm literally personally, on a personal level, using an Apivia power supply. So, I mean, I, I have one of the like bricks, the electric bricks that have the power surge. I'm not hundred percent positive whether or not these power supplies have the power surge feature inside of them, but I have a brick with the power surge anyways. Um, and most, most of the time at, in 2023, um, companies do end up including that power, power surge protector, uh, just because most companies now offer pretty long warranty. So overall, this is a, this is a great gaming PC for 1080p and 1440p. Uh, I know it's a little bit longer, but I didn't want to make a useless video for, for the people that are, um, you know, actually looking to build a computer and want to get parts that are actually going to work together and not, not like pair anything wrong. So I hope this video helped you and I will catch you guys in the next one.